Making his way to your screen, wearing award-winning Zubas that haven't won him any awards, this is Dilly! I hate Mondays, but I love them when I have to do the Dilly Show. Ladies and gentlemen, weird flex, but weird intro, but anyways, this is the second episode of the Dilly Show. I'm your host, Dilly, aka Dylan Melanson, aka Project Melanson on Instagram and Twitter, although I don't use Twitter very much. And uh, this is the second episode. I cannot believe I made it this far. Good on me, I'd say. Um, today, I have some things to talk about. I actually have a couple... Uh, segments set up that's what i call them today so the first thing i want to talk about is how good the first episode was and how good people enjoyed it because a lot of people okay first off actually i did not mean to put this one right where it is but like that's three jesus dillies in one spot one two three it's different kinds of merch anyways um, this is the second episode. The first one was done really well, and people really liked it, and I'm really thankful, and I'm really gonna put effort into this show now, now that I know that people enjoy it so much. Um, I got a lot of good feedback, a lot of comments, and I decided that as a segment for the show, I want to do a thing every week where I get fans to submit their own, um, little, what do they call them? I call them entries. They submit their own entries, and the, uh, as for dis- uh, topics, I should discuss. I sent out a post on my Facebook and on my Instagram of just people, like, I'm asking people, like, give me stuff to talk about. Like, give me some topics to talk about, and I'll talk about them. I got four set up for this show, and, uh, I think with the first part of the way, I'm just, uh, very grateful, uh, for the fact that the first episode was received so well. Uh, it warms my heart, it really does, and I'm really thankful that you guys enjoyed the first episode. Now... Let's get into the second segment of the show. I don't really want to announce my segments, but I guess I'm already doing it, so I might as well do it. Uh, we're going to get into the fan entries. Uh, I asked people on my Instagram and Facebook to send me interesting creative responses um, for things I should talk about. And I'm going to start off with one sent in my, by my buddy, t- uh, Tanner. He tells me to talk about my wrestling career. Um, I don't want to talk a whole lot about this because I don't know really what I can say and what I can't and what I should say and what I shouldn't. Um... But all is going well. I'm in a very decent storyline right now, and I think things are going great. Um, I wrestle for NWE and Miramichi, and uh, I wrestle as the Lackey. Or, not as the Lackey, that's not what they call me. They call me the Precious Mark. I'm an idiot. Um, I'm the Precious Mark. That's what I do. I love one one man, and that's Precious Preston Carter. And also Mr. Wallace, of course. Don't hurt me, either of you, please. They have me chained up whenever I'm not doing these videos, so... Yikes. But hey... My pro wrestling career is going pretty good. If you guys haven't seen the videos, I do have a playlist, and I do want to share it with you guys, because I do want you to check it out. Um, So the playlist is actually going to be in the description of this video, so long as I remember. I should write that down, but oh well. If I remember, I do. If I don't, I don't. Whatever it is, what it is. Um, So that was my wrestling career. Uh, Yep, done. (laughs) I'm done. I'm retiring right now. Um, No, but I think it's going very good. I think I have a good potential. I think I have good potential in wrestling, so, uh, if I can keep at it in the gym, I just actually got done a workout, I'm actually, let me just flex my biceps, they're not looking the best right now, um, I will admit that, they're not looking the greatest, but if I do, like, the flex like this, you guys can't see it, I'm wearing a shirt, but I can look pretty promising, I can look pretty good in some angles with some different flexes, so, uh, weird flex, but alright, um, Wrestling career, done and dusted, talked about that. I might talk about it in the future. I'm sure I will. I have wrestling all the time, so I love telling stories of the road, stories of travel, stories of wrestling. Just, I love wrestling. Wrestling is my passion. I hope one day, my dream job is to be a wrestler. Like, I don't want to work. (laughs) Let me wrestle for a living, please. Um, That or YouTube, I'd do either of those as a job. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, my wrestling career, and it's great. Thanks for asking, Tanner. Uh, next, uh, KDG versus PM. If you guys don't know what that is, it's Kraft Dinner Guy, known as Dawson now, because he died. I fucking killed him. There is no more Kraft Dinner Guy, because I won the fucking race. Sorry for my profanity, but no more Dawson. Dawson, you're done, bud. I'm not doing any more videos with you. I can't. I got better things to do. 
Damn, that was harsh, and I am sorry if I hurt your feelings. Don't cry. Um, next, Don Cherry, somebody recommended. I can't remember who, uh, I think that was, uh, Colin. Yeah, he might be watching, that'd be cool. Um, uh, Don Cherry. Let's get serious for a moment. Because this is a very serious topic. And some people... Everybody's opinion on it's kind of different, and I'm realizing that Canada's full of racists. <laughs> um, I don't know about that for sure. Um, if you guys don't know the situation, I'll try to explain it the best I can. Don Cherry was on some hockey network television show. I don't watch very much hockey. I play the game. That's about it. And I don't even have like, the most recent one. I think I literally play NHL 17, but I play it all the time. Like I love playing it. It's just it's an old game. Anywho. I don't watch hockey. Never did. I watched the, uh, I was going to say Super Bowl. That's how little I know about hockey. I always watch the fucking, uh, the cup, the Stanley Cup. I always watch that. I always cheer for the Senators, actually, thanks to Roman, my buddy. Uh, he's big into the Senators and he got me into them, so, damn. <laughs> um, yeah, but Don Cherry made an interesting remark. Um, he's talking about, uh, I, I believe he's talking about immigrants to this country and he says, you people enjoy our milk and honey, um, but you people won't pay a couple bucks for a poppy for uh, Remembrance Day. And I love the fact that he's endorsing Remembrance Day. Like, Remembrance Day is very important to respect our veterans. But when he says, you people, you people enjoy our stuff and you people don't buy our poppies, that's when it becomes... Um, not the best thing to say. He certainly should not have said it on public television. It was a very, very bad idea. And he was fired um, properly so. I believe NHL handled the situation as well as they could. Um, without cutting the cutting, cut, cutting them off air, I guess I should say. Um, oh well. It's a damn shame. Like, Don Cherry... I, most people know who Don Cherry is. People that don't like hockey. People that do. Everybody knows John Don Cherry, especially in Canada. Like he's he's a legend. Don Cherry's a legendary man, and I don't take anything away from him from this. Um, certainly, um, has not the best opinions, I guess, and uh, certainly should not be speaking the opinions that he has, I guess, in this situation. Anyways, um, very wise man, but um, you know, not a very good look for him at this point. So it is what it is. Um, you know, there are people like that. And if Don Cherry's one of them, so be it, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't want to get way too involved with it. I don't I don't want to, like, you know, share too much of an opinion. I'm certainly not racist. I love people of all kinds. I'm not racist. I'm not homophobic. Nothing like that. I'm a pretty cool guy. If you're a cool person, I like you. If you're not a cool person, I don't. That's just the way it is. So Don Cherry, I don't know, man. It sucks. Uh, and last but not least, this one was an interesting one. As soon as I read this response, I did not know what to think. A philosophy of life. Why are we here? What's our purpose? And what is our end goal as humans? I think everyone's philosophy is kind of different. But I'm going to talk about my philosophy and how I feel about my life. Because life, people live it different ways. I'd almost say it's subjective. I don't know if that's a proper word for that or not, but... Everybody lives their lives differently. Everybody has their different ethics. Everybody has their different codes. People have different sexualities, different genders, different backgrounds, different races. You name it. Everybody's kind of got a different story. Even if you're like you and somebody else are very similar, you both have completely different stories and your shoes have walked in entirely different dirt. Um, for me, my philosophy, the way I live, um, right now, my life is great. My life is incredible. I am an 18-year-old man. I am a fucking adult, as I spoke about in the last week's episode, which, if you haven't seen, go check it out. Um, I'm an 18-year-old man. I do this YouTube thing to decent success. I do my Instagram thing to decent success. I do my wrestling thing to decent success. My name is pretty well known. I wear a shirt with my face on it, which I think is fucking awesome. Um... I'm living my best life right now. Like This is absolutely the best time to be alive, no matter what. I'm taking every day, not for granted, I'm taking every day 
Like, it's my last, you know? I live every day to my fullest, and that's what I really try to do, and I truly mean that when I say that. A lot of people say that, and then they go out, and they have, like, you know, a normal day, but I think about it all the time. You know, this could be my last day on Earth. I could die tomorrow. I had two energy drinks today. I could die right fucking now. I could die on camera. This could be my last video. I knew this wouldn't get past episode two. <laughs> um, but my life right now is great. My philosophy of life, what do I want to do in my life? I have a set list of goals that I want to do. Not necessarily like a written list, although I did have a bucket list for a minute, but I don't really know where that went. I have a list of goals to accomplish in my life. Like, I have wrestling goals. I have uh, internet goals. I have life goals. Uh, I have body goals. You know, I have a certain weight I want to get down to. I have a certain weight I want to lift. Uh, I have tons of goals. Um, I, I have some of the, ma like the, you know, everybody's kind of got goals to have like kids and stuff. And I totally have that, you know, I definitely want to be a father at some point in my life. That's part of my philosophy. Like if I didn't become a father in my life, I'd be rather disappointed. Like, you know, if it comes down to it and I can't end up, like, I don't end up having a kid. I won't feel right. I won't feel like I've lived a proper life. Uh, I don't want to get married. I'm not about that. I'm not about marriage. Um, if I like someone or love someone, well, if I have a child with someone, I'm going to have to love the person. I'm not just going to like a person and have a child with them because that's not how you should do things. Um, I'm, if I love someone, I love someone. I don't need to write on a piece of paper that I love someone. I don't need to spend a million fucking dollars on a stupid thing that brings a bunch of family that you don't really want to see over to fucking celebrate the fact that you're married. I don't want that. That's not what I'm. That's not what I'm about. You know, if I love someone, I love someone. I don't need to put a ring on that finger. Although, trust me, they're gonna be uh, well taken care of if they're with me because I'm a good fella. Um, wow, I did not. That was kind of just. That was weird. Anyway, um, but yeah, in my life, uh, I could talk about some more goals. I suppose my wrestling goals. I want to be world champion someday. I don't know what company for. I, I don't think I'll ever make it to WWE. And that's a really shitty outlook to have. Like, I should be looking at it like, I'm going to make it. But I'm, I've am i come to terms. I've become pretty realistic with myself. Like, the odds of me getting there someday are very, very slim. Um, like, they, they look at millions of people a day, probably. And they don't all make it. Not everybody makes it. There's a billion pro wrestlers out there. Not everyone's going to make it. Maybe not a billion. That's over-exaggeration. There's probably at least a million pro wrestlers out there. And, you know, you see guys on Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. Those guys are lucky. They're some of the lucky ones. And on each roster, there's about, like, you know, between anywhere from 30 and 50 people. So think about that. Just in Raw, SmackDown, and NXT alone, it's about maybe 200, 300 people, if you can count, like, NXT UK and all the branches and everything. 205 Live, all those guys. There's probably about 300 people, wrestlers, employed by WWE right now. That's I'm pulling that completely out of my ass. So the odds of me probably are not very good. I'm not going to go and do some fucking math right now. But I'm just saying, like, they have a very small group of people as opposed... Like, the ratio is not very good. Say there is a million wrestlers out there. Every wrestler has in the back of their mind, I want to be in WWE. No matter who you are. I don't care what company you're wrestling for. You want to make it to WWE. You want to go to WrestleMania. You want to have that moment. Say there's about a million wrestlers out there. I, I don't know what the actual number would be. I don't know. Say there's a million. Say they have 300 people in WWE alone. That's 300 to a million. It's not very good odds, fellas. Um, <laughs> you know, I... You know, I'm honestly good with whatever I do. If I don't leave NWE, the company I wrestle for, that's fine. I just want to be the best guy in NWE at that point. Which, you know, I'm pretty young right now. So, a couple years time, I could be alright. You know, like right now I'm the shits. And I'm going to be the shits for a while. But, hey, I'm working, I'm training. I'm training every other day working out. Like, not many people do that. And not many people do the weights I'm lifting right now. Which kind of brings me to my other goals. My weight goals. Uh, I want to lose some weight. I'm not going to tell you how much. I'm not going to tell you how much I weigh right now. Because I weigh a lot. Too much. That being said, I have a lot of muscle mass. Because I currently bench. My max bench is 30... No, I did 315 one time. So 315 is my max bench. 
Uh, my normal bench that I kind of just do for reps and sets at this point is three, uh, 205, which that's not bad. 205 pounds, that's okay. It could be better, it could be worse, but I do like 10 reps and four sets. Like, you know, I'm actually working on posting a video about me working out because I recorded it and I'm thinking about posting it. Maybe on this channel, maybe on a different one, maybe on Instagram. I don't know where I'm going to post it, but um, for me doing what I do at such a like a high level at this age, not bad. I'm 18 years old. Like, I'm benching 205. Like, I do ten, uh, 10 sets, 10 reps, 4 sets. Uh, I can curl 50 pound dumbbells, which not many fucking people I know can do. Like, and I can do like 20 reps, like, you know, 10 on each fucking side. That's not bad. I'll take that. Um, I can do good shoulder presses. I can squat a fair amount. I can only squat about 200 pounds. It's the most I've really done. I could do more. It's just that's the most I've done. So. I think for the that stuff, I'm doing pretty good. I definitely want to improve as time goes on. This is kind of looking at this is looking like a you know like a New Year's video or something. I'm just explaining all these goals I have because this is the philosophy of my life. Um, thank you, Evan McDonald, for uh, suggesting me talk about this because it's actually consumed some time, which is what I'm looking for, and uh, it's been interesting. It, it makes me think, you know. Um, one last thing about the philosophy of life. What am I doing after school? You may be asking. Because um, I, I am still in high school. And uh, of course the wrestling career I'm always going to be pursuing. But what else do I want to do? Do I want to go to college or university or anything like that? Well quite frankly. I don't have the smarts to go to university. I'm in financial math right now. And I just got a 95 on a test. So that's awesome for me. But like this is financial math. It's grade 11 math and I'm in grade 12 because quite frankly in grade 11 I failed grade 11 math so I had to redo it and I got a 95 on a test the other day. That was fucking dope. And like I got the test back today and I think I got like a 21 out of 22. It's like fucking right. Fucking mint. I like that. Um, but do I have the smarts to go to university? No. Do I have the smarts to go to college? Yeah. But do I want to? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know life's not easy. I know if I don't go to college, I probably won't get a good job. And it's kind of necessary for me to go do that. And trust me, I am thinking of college. I am thinking about it. I'm thinking of doing business because, man, I can sell shit. <laughs> like, I'm a fucking... I'm not going to say I'm a genius. I'm not going to say... Oh, I am kind of an entrepreneur. I will say that. But look at this shit. Who the fuck does this? And look at this fucking microphone. It's stamped. Stickers all around. There's a Dilly sticker here. A definitive Dilly sticker here. Another face sticker on the back. I sell stickers. I sell shirts. I sell posters. I sell fucking business cards. I sold $50 worth of fucking business cards. Who the fuck sells business cards? Fucking me. Who sells 50 bucks worth of them? Fucking me. I could go to business school. I could go to college for business. I was even going to film school. That would be cool. But that's in Toronto. So like... Fuck that. Not going to Toronto. Um, not that I wouldn't, but like, you know, Toronto is, uh, you know, it's, it's over there. It's not, it's not, it's not very close. Um, I don't want to move just to go to film school. Like, you know, I am passionate about filmmaking and video making. That's why I've done YouTube for so long. Like, I'm not getting fucking, yeah, I'm not going to say I'm not getting views because I am kind of getting good views now, but there was a point where I was getting like one view per video, but I kept making videos and I kept hustling because I knew times like these would come. And where am I right now on YouTube? Fucking great. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, that's what it really means to me, honestly. Like, I was doing, like, videos with one view. I'm not even bullshitting. You guys can go look for them yourself. They're literally still on my channel. I was doing videos I got like, one view piece. And I was doing them pretty much daily for one at one point. I was actually doing daily videos one summer. It was summer of 2016 or... No, it was 2017. I did daily videos. They didn't get views, but I made them because I knew that if I kept do if I kept doing what I'm doing, and I kept persevering, and I kept working towards a goal, then I'd get here. And right now, I'm at a good spot. I think there's room for improvement, and I certainly think I will improve on YouTube. But I'm good with where I'm at right now, and I thank you guys very much from the bottom of my heart for being here. And also, I'm gonna take this little. Uh, I guess we're about halfway through the show, so I'm gonna take this time to ask you guys. Um, if you guys have seen Good Mythical Morning lately, that's a show I've been watching lately. They do this thing where halfway through the show, they're just like, hey, can you guys like this video? And that's what I'm going to do. Can you guys like this video and subscribe? Uh, that would mean a lot. It's really going to help me out in the long run. I'm just making sure you guys help me out because I'm trying to help you out and give you some entertainment. And if you guys are listening to me on any other platform, which I am now doing, I am on different platforms. 
Uh, there's going to be a list of platforms probably in the description, I guess, of YouTube. Uh, I don't know where I'm at right now. I could be on Podbean, SoundCloud, you name it. I'm probably there. I'm everywhere, probably. I'm working on getting some new platforms up. And, uh, yeah, so list of them is probably down there. Probably. I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. Who cares? Um, anyways, let's move on with the show. And right now on the Dilly Show, I have a big announcement a big 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 announcement huge announcement ginormous announcement very large announcement i'm gonna say right now after a drum roll the big announcement is that i'm announcing right now as of right now this announcement date that i am starting a second channel well i'm not really starting and i kind of already started i just haven't been using it but i'm gonna start using it wrestling rage this is going to be a thing that i do i have a second channel for wrestling so it's gonna have wrestling videos on it go check it out means a lot that was the announcement thank you guys very much and now oh there's a link in the description to wrestling rage by the way i don't want to fucking say there isn't because that'd be dumb if i said that anyways let's move on with the show just wanted to announce that wrestling rage there's gonna be wrestling content going on over there So go check it out if you like wrestling, because I do funny, good shit, you know? So let's move on to the main event of the episode, which is always the last segment. The main event today, I'm going to talk about 10 movies that I like, because I do like movies. Movies are pretty cool. Um... So I'm going to talk about 10 that I like. i got a list right here. These are not my top 10, although some of them would certainly... uh, be in my top 10 it's just this isn't like a top 10 list this is just some movies i like some not all some uh there are definitely movies on this list that there are definitely movies that aren't on this list that i absolutely adore it's just i couldn't fit them all on the list and these are not the top 10 as i said these are just ten, the first 10 i thought of if i'm being honest that's how i came up with this so i'm gonna move the mic so i can look at my list let me see if i can just turn it a little bit Sorry if that sounds bad to you guys. Okay, so number one. It's not a top ten, so I shouldn't be saying number one. Um, I'm going to try actually to sit here because it is a better angle. First movie I'm going to talk about is Pulp Fiction. This is my absolute favorite movie of all time. Quentin Tarantino's best work, and Quentin Tarantino is the best director ever. So, like, you add up one and one. This is the best movie ever. Um, It's, like, three hours long, and that's a lot, but, like... Get through it, because it's worth it. If you guys haven't seen Pulp Fiction, it's on YouTube. Do yourselves a massive fucking favor and watch Pulp Fiction. It's probably the best thing to come out of 1994. <laughs> very, very good fucking movie. It's my absolute favorite. It's got Samuel L. Jackson. It's got fucking John Travolta. It's got fucking Uma Thurman. It's got fucking Bruce Willis, the fucking guy from Die Hard. Um... What else is Bruce Willis in? <laughs> Fuck you, Bruce Willis. I'm just kidding. Bruce Willis is a fucking great guy. I love Bruce Willis. Everything that he's in, I'm interested in because he's fucking cool. Pulp Fiction, he's in it. Does a great job. What's his name? It's a uh, fucking uh, Butch. Good movie. Uh, he's a boxer. Anyways, we're not talking about fucking uh, that guy. <laughs> fucking that guy over there. We're talking about Pulp Fiction. Greatest movie of all time. And a movie that I want to do a movie review on, as I talked about last week. Um, links in the description for last week's episode as well, in case you didn't hear me the first time I said that. Um, yeah, Pulp Fiction's a great fucking movie, and my next movie that I'm going to talk about is Clerks! Clerks is a very, very good movie as well, from Kevin Smith. I was about to say Kevin Hart. No, they are not the same person. Kevin Smith, um, I believe this is one of his first movies. Maybe his first, honestly, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not positive. I didn't do a whole lot of research, although maybe I should have. Although I do want to do a Quirks review at some point in the future, so trust me. I'm going to probably do it, and I'm going to be correct then. Uh, It's a movie about these two clerks at a convenience store running a fucking thing. Running a convenience store. And now, I explained this to a movie to my friend, and he's like, this does not sound like a good movie. I was like, man, two guys at a fucking convenience store. I know that doesn't sound very fun, but it's a really good fucking movie. Uh, really good characters, really good dialogue. Uh, Kevin Smith is really, really good. Like, he's a very good, like, underground, grungy type uh, director. Very, very well-produced movie. I love this movie very much. Uh, it's done in black and white, 
which is not a stylistic choice. It's because they were very poor. So it's a very uh, low-budget film, which is why they probably did it in a fucking convenience store. It's awesome. It debuted the characters Jay and Silent Bob, who ended up just having a movie recently called Debut. They also had a movie earlier in the 2000s named uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. And uh, Clerks, I don't know if I told you guys, was released in 1994 as well as Pulp Fiction. So, I mean, I guess two good movies came out in 1994. Simple as that. Next movie I'm going to talk about is Pineapple Express. This is actually one of the first movies I ever saw uh, live in person, like uh, on a big screen. It wasn't at a theater. It was at a drive-in, actually, which is like a drive-in theater. Uh, it was in Sussex. It was very fucking cool. I was a young kid. And I didn't know anything about weed. And I'm like, you know, I, I guess I'll watch this movie. I can't remember what else they showed that night. I think it was Pineapple Express and Step Brothers, which is also a very good movie. And I think it's also on this list and it's next. But I'm going to talk, uh, talk about Pineapple Express right now. Awesome fucking movie. It's got Seth Rogen in it. Any movie with Seth Rogen in it is fucking gold. It's also got James Franco in it. And the same rule applies for him. James Franco is a fucking legend. And it's pretty much about... It's a stoner comedy. It's pretty much... The, I'd, I'd honestly refer to it as, um, you know, the nowadays equivalent of Cheech and Chong. Like, it's that good. It's a fucking classic stoner movie. And, I mean, you don't even have to be a stoner to enjoy it. Like, it's just a very funny movie with very funny people. A uh, lovely fucking movie. One of my absolute favorites of all time, for sure. Uh, probably the best stoner comedy ever. Like, I hate saying that over movies like Half-Baked, over Cheech and Chong. But I honestly think this is the best fucking stoner movie that in existence. I think it is. Don't quote me on that. Well, maybe you do. Actually, fuck you. Quote me on that all you fucking want. I like Pineapple Express. Leave me alone. Uh, next is Step Brothers, as I said. Another awesome duo movie. These have all been duo movies. Pulp Fiction's a duo movie. Clerks is a duo movie. Pineapple Express is a duo movie. Step Brothers is a duo movie. What's up with all these fucking duo movies? That's that's weird. I just noticed this right now. Like, obviously there's full cast for all of them. But, like, it, re it mainly revolves around two people these past four movies have. Step Brothers surrounds these two new stepbrothers who are in their 40s which is funny um their moms and their dads uh get together and they're stepbrothers even though they're like 40 and they both live at home with their parents so they have to try to get along at first they don't and then they do and they cause havoc on anything that moves um including their dad's boat spoiler alert uh, they're played by Will Ferrell and John C. Riley, both really funny guys. A uh, very funny duo, actually. They're pretty uh, well known as a duo. Um, in movies like Talladega Nights, like you know that sort of thing. I think they had a movie recently as well, but I don't think it was as well received. Which I don't know. It is what it is. They're kind of older now. Uh, but this was a fucking awesome movie. It came out at a great time. It came out around two thousand eight, two thousand nine, around there. Same time as uh, Pineapple Express, just around there, I think. Um, it was a very good fucking movie, and I could watch it over and over and over again. There's just so many quotable lines from it as well. It's just, it's so good. It's so awesome. I, I love it. I see memes of it all the time still. Like, it's so good. Uh, the next movie is Zombieland, which is another 2009 movie. You'll see I like certain years. I didn't notice that till like, right now. But I kind of do. Like, I like certain time periods. I think 94 was great. 0809 was also great for movies. Um... I'm not trying to put all these movies in the same list, like, of different, of the same, you know, traits and whatever, like, all from the same time. I don't mean to do that. It's just these are some of my favorite movies. Zombieland is no exception. The second one? I'm sorry. I didn't like it. <laughs> it was not very good. Um, but the first one, iconic. One of the greatest zombie movies of all time. Uh, best zombie com- zom mm, I was gonna say best zombie comedy of all time. But there's another one on this list that is really pretty good as well and i'm sure you guys can probably guess what it is maybe you can't but um zombie land it's got four main characters to it it's got woody harrelson as tallahassee it's got uh three other people <laughs> jesse eisenberg emma stone and that girl um the other one the small one the young one hey google who plays a little rock in zombie land i think it was a little rock Abigail Breslin. Abigail Breslin, that's who it is. Uh, it's these four survivors of the zombie apocalypse, and they try to um, survive the zombie apocalypse. It's pretty funny. They go driving around. They go to Hollywood. They fight off zombies, and 
very good movie. Like, not one bad thing to say about that movie. The second one, ugh, ugh, left a bad taste in my mouth, I'll say that much. The next movie is actually the zombie movie I was talking about. I didn't realize it was next on the list. This movie is Shaun of the Dead. And Shaun of the Dead, oh my god. Absolutely one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my life. Um, it's got Simon Pegg, Nick Frost. Uh, or is Nick Frost the director? I can't remember. Who's the director? Hey, Google. Who directed Shaun of the Dead? Shaun of the Dead was directed by Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright was the director. Nick Frost is the man that played Ed. Shaun is played by Simon Pegg, as I said. Uh, and this is also a movie regarding a group of, like, five people uh, surviving the zombie apocalypse in the Winchester, which is their local bar. A very funny movie. Very great movie. Uh, it's It also has very strong themes of friendship, which I think is very important. Uh, Ed and uh, Sean, they're very they're the best of friends. Uh, they live together pretty much. Uh, Ed is really nothing without Sean, and Sean is really nothing without Ed. It's kind of like uh, George and Lenny from, uh, what's that movie? Uh, of Mice and Men, the book, not the movie, but it is a movie as well. But it's kind of like that idea. Like, you know, Lenny's nothing without George, and George is nothing without Lenny. Ed is nothing without Sean, and Sean is nothing without Ed. It's a very good movie about friendship and zombies. So, if you haven't seen it, see it. It's good. Uh, next is It, 2017. Probably the greatest horror movie I've seen in theaters. Uh, I've seen a couple, but this has to be the best. It too, I saw it in theaters, wasn't bad, but relied way, way too much on flashbacks. Kind of ruined the movie, not gonna lie. It was not very good because of the flashbacks. Although, seeing fucking, what's his face there? Um, Bill Hader. I think that's his name, Bill Hader? Yeah, he's fucking incredible. I love him. He was also uh, in... Uh, Pineapple Express for a moment. He was in the very beginning of it. I love Bill Hader. He's the fucking bee's knees. Love him very much. But anyway, it's not about Bill Hader. It's about it from 2017. Great horror movie. Uh, the casting was done perfectly. All the kids did a very well job. And Bill Skarsgård did an amazing job as Pennywise. Beat Tim Curry's. And Tim Curry's Pennywise was pretty fucking good. But I think Bill Skarsgård nailed the part. Uh... Perfect casting, really good story. It's obviously a remake, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I'm not a huge fan of remakes, and I'm sure I will talk about that in great length at some point within the duration of this podcast, but not this one, but you know what I mean. It's not a podcast, it's a show. Sorry. The Dilly Show, not the Dilly Podcast. Um, but great movie. Overall, amazing movie. Remake, but hey, I'm not complaining. I honestly believe it was way better than the remake, or than the original, I'm sorry. Uh, the original 1990s one or 80s, I don't remember when the fucking came out, but It 2017 is the best It movie ever made, including the original and It Chapter 2. Next is Joker. Uh, Joker, I went and saw in the theaters recently, and it was very good. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix, oh my god. Best portrayal of Joker ever. He beat Heath Ledger's, in my opinion. I'm not, I will stand by that. Heath Ledger did great, but like... Joaquin Phoenix gave Joker something that Joker never had, and it's sympathy. Like, he's never, ever had sympathy in a Batman movie ever before. I mean, they might have tried, but, like, this is the only ever movie I've seen that you could actually really feel bad for the Joker, because that's how they set it up. And they show how fucked up it is that he's portrayed as the bad guy, and it's honestly just a very interesting um, display of mental illness. Like, it's very interestingly done and it's not too like you know it's a very sensitive topic nowadays because people these days you know i'm not gonna say mental illness is a joke because it isn't whatsoever but nowadays people can get really offended over that kind of stuff and you know it is what it is but i think they handled it very well they didn't make fun of it at all um they did a very well job portraying it and uh, Joaquin Phoenix was the absolute perfect guy to do it. The only guy I could have seen doing a better job than Joaquin Phoenix would be maybe uh, maybe like a Jim Carrey. I think that could have been good. Although he's already been Riddler in a Batman movie. So maybe putting him as Joker wouldn't make the most sense. But Joaquin Phoenix did a great job. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix, uh, I think, you know, it would have been great with Carrey in there. But it's perfect the way it is with Joaquin Phoenix. Like, I wouldn't have changed it. And I'm really thankful it is the way it is. Uh, next, 
The last movie... No, I have two more. Uh, the next movie is an oldie. It's from the 70s, I do believe. A Clockwork Orange. Um, I don't have much to say about this one. I haven't seen it in a while. I do need to catch up on it. Um, but from what I remember, it's a great psychological movie. Uh, it's very cool. Very amazing imagery by Stanley Kubrick, as he always does in The Shining and The Clockwork Orange. Like, Stanley Kubrick is one of, the, he's one of those directors. Like He's fucking phenomenal he's incredible no movie is like a stanley kubrick movie and you can tell a stanley kubrick movie out of a crowd and this movie stands the test of time a clockwork orange does it is probably one of the greatest pieces of art ever produced uh it was done very well amazing everything it's just a great movie if you guys haven't seen it um it is not for the faint of heart it's a movie that um mostly revolves around this group of heathens uh looking to uh, abuse and rape women and men. I don't know if they rape the men, but they definitely uh, abuse them. They fight a lot. Um, it's a it's a gang warfare caused by these fellas, and they get caught up with the law. And I don't know. It's a great movie. Like it honestly leaves me like speechless. Honestly, it's that just interesting. It's such an interesting film, and I it I definitely gravitated towards it. And uh, I'd highly recommend you watch it before you die. Last is a wrestling movie called Beyond the Mat. Uh, Beyond the Mat is a documentary that uh, was released in 1999. Uh, and it follows three different paths, I believe. It follows Jake the Snake Roberts, it follows Terry Funk, and it follows Mick Foley. Uh, all at different stages of their career and all uh, different stories to tell. Uh, Terry Funk uh, was having his supposed last match in ECW, which didn't even end up being his last match. But it was a great match. It was a ladder match between himself, uh, Stephen Richards, or Stevie Richards, and Sandman, maybe? I don't remember who the third man was for the life of me. It might have been Shane Douglas. Not positive. I honestly don't really remember, and I'm sorry. I've seen that match a million times. I'm just drawing a blank right now. Uh, brain fart moment. Uh, it shows Jake the Snake uh, uh, really having a hard time on the independence. He's uh, heavily on drugs at the time. This is before he got into DDP yoga and all that shit. Um, it was a very hard time for him. And it was showing the awful part of wrestling. Like, you know, one of the really bad parts. Like, you know, you can have your 15 minutes of fame. But once you're out and if you're into hard drugs and shit, like, your life is not easy. You hurt. Uh, and that was a very strong theme in uh, Terry Funk's story as well. He was very... Uh, in pain, woke up and had a knee brace on, like, he was, you know, in pretty rough shape, and so was Jake the Snake, Mick Foley was just, uh, having his I Quit match with The Rock, that ended with the, I think, 12 chair shots to the head, when Mick Foley was, uh, handcuffed, which gave him, I think, a concussion at least, and fucked him up pretty bad, and his kids were in the attendance, which was very scarring to them, I'm sure, but very good movie, very good stories, uh, you know, it really shows the inside of wrestling really well, I find. And uh, very well job done by uh, whoever made it. So, those are 10 movies you should watch. And that concludes this episode of The Daily Show. So, thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed, remember to leave a like for sure. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys want. And uh, go to my Instagram, at Project Wants, and leave me a suggestion as to what I should talk about in the next episode. Um, thank you guys very much for watching. I've been your host, Dylan Melanson, signing out. Mm -hmm.